this fellow, well, he also works all over the West Coast. And he's in movies. And he is just, well, he's a go-getter. Yeah. So let's go get Johnny Corn. <laughs> Thank you very much for supporting live comedy. Uh, you give yourselves a round of applause for that. Yeah, yeah. Let's move this over here. Uh, of course, my last name is Corn. I noticed that we had Kraut, so uh, there's a theme. <laughs> I'm just saying. But in my defense, I'm the only uh, comic in the lineup. I, I, you'll notice that that's uh, na named after a starch. <laughs> And, and being the only guy in the lineup, I, I should say hi to all the men out there, uh, all three of you. It's fantastic. Uh, a little bit about me. I was born Irish and Catholic. Um, as a good Catholic, I tell you I have to give up something for Lent. So this year, I uh, gave up my New Year's resolution. <laughs> Be, being Irish uh, has its advantages. You know, when I was going through school, uh, they'd have um, Multicultural Ethnic Day. You bring in food from your culture. So some people bring in some kimchi, uh, and other people bring in some like naan and curry, you know, that sort of thing. It became my turn, and I brought in a box of Lucky Charms. <laughs> I'm always thinking, you know. Uh, but, but I'm a true Catholic in that I go to church twice a year. <laughs> I, I have an uh, overactive imagination. And so I always, and I don't know if anyone else says this, and I don't know if this is going to hit or not, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because I don't care. Anyway, when I'm going through school, oh, sorry, when I go to church, uh, I, same thing, I, I actually uh, imagined the gospel as if it took place today, right? So for example, there's a story about uh, Jesus was going to be set free by Pontius Pilate, he's going to let the crowd decide. Well, that's like 2,000 years ago. So if it took place today, it would be in the form of a reality show, and it would go something like this. I'm Pontius Pilate, your host, and welcome to Crucifixion, the show where you, the people, get to decide who gets to live and who gets to die. So let's meet our contestants. First, we have Barabbas Nefarious. Someone got that, that's good. Against Jesus H. Christ. And the H stands for Hubert, which, by the way, is his middle name, a little trivia for you. Uh, just saying. So if you want uh, Barabbas to live, then text. To 666. Unless you're German, and then you go 999, but hold your phone upside down at the time. The phone lines will be open for another three Oh, we have the results already. Well, the phone lines are going to be open for another three hours, but that's kind of a little bit uh, interesting. We're a show of integrity. Okay, so the person that's going to be set free is a Barabbas, but Jesus, you get our consolation prize. This week it's, it's death. Uh, before we nail you, you get one last song. Let's bring in the apostles. They're going to be your background singers. Now, I doubt Thomas will be here, and Judas was hanging outside, but we'll bring in the rest of the apostles. <laughs> I'm about to spot out reminding you that uh, I'm washing my hands of this whole show. I, I'm serious. Yeah, I'm filling in for me next week. <laughs> Sorry. F filling in for me uh, next week will be James Franco. Until then... <laughs> Peace out. And so that's how I, am I alone in this? I, a lot of people shaking their heads, yes. Okay, fine. Fine, I'm alone on this. Fine. Okay, so here's the thing. One more thing about being Catholic, and then I'll move on. I, as a kid, I, I got all of the Catholic holidays off from school, which I thought was fantastic. I even got the bad ones off. You know, a good example of a horrible holiday that makes no sense Columbus Day. Right? Columbus, he gets a holiday for getting lost. He's trying to find a spice out to India. Ends up in the Caribbean. Typical man didn't ask directions. All he had to do, go into any of these tech firms, and they could have told him where India was. First, I want to come out with the Columbus GPS. The Columbus GPS will send you where you never intended to go. Formerly Apple Maps. Of course... <laughs> Here's the thing, that's not the only holiday that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, another one is, um, well, another one is uh, Groundhog Day. Uh, Groundhog Day, you, you, you deny the science of climate change, but you do accept weather forecasts from a rodent. <laughs> okay. A Fourth of July, it's a great holiday, birth of a nation and all that. But I'll tell you something, there's nothing more American than buying a Japanese car on the Fourth of July. <laughs> Just saying. Thanksgiving. Thank, I, I love being thankful for what you have. 
It's fantastic and you should reflect. I, I gen genuinely believe that. But the story of Thanksgiving makes no sense. It's about these uh, white people. Because let's face it, it's always about white people, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's about these white people. They move into the neighborhood, changing it forever. And, uh, but there's no Whole Foods there yet. And so they're starving. <laughs> and so the Indian people, they felt sorry for them. So they fed them. And you know what they say? If you feed them, they'll never go away. And that's why white people are here to this day. <laughs> but we never talk about the second Thanksgiving. The second Thanksgiving is when the Indian people were, were cold and the white people gave them blankets. What, is it too soon for a smallpox show? <laughs> what? That, that was 200 years ago, man. Trail of tears. Really? Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Any parents here? Yes. Okay, some parents here. Fantastic. This is for you. You tell your kids all year long, don't talk to strangers, and then you sit them on Santa's lap and you wonder why they cry? <laughs> really? Is it that or because Santa's just a wee bit creepy? You know? Who else can get away with saying stuff like, sit on my lap with a girl and to tell Santa what you really want? <laughs> Have you been naughty? <laughs> Do I be on my nicest? Are you a ho ho ho? I feel you stalking with something yummy. You know, I've been watching you. I know when you're sleeping. And I know when you're awake. It's creepy. It's almost as creepy as Jared. Here's the thing about Jared from Subway. He gets sent to 6 to 12 on child porn charges and, and for being a pedophile, which is interesting because 6 to 12 is also his preferred age range. It's true. It's ironic. But it also explains why in the, in the commercial, uh, the, the, the kid asked uh, Jared, uh, is that a foot long in your hand? Uh, <laughs> I can go all night. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, th there was this, I was a little bit er early coming over and I saw a kid on a leash. You guys see that kid on a leash? And, and, and I swear, I'm you know, a little ADD. But I, I thought to myself, oh my God, kid on a leash. I prefer my kids to be free range. <laughs> No, because then they taste better. You put an apple in the mouth, put on my artistry spit, they'll taste just like veal. Did, did I go too far with that one? No. Okay, I'll tell you something. I did that same joke. I, I'll just, I'm off topic here, but I did that same joke in, in uh, Bakersfield, and this uh, lady comes, yells out, you don't like children. She said this to me. You don't like children. And so I turned to her and I said, I, I'm sorry, you, you misunderstand me. I love children. They're delicious. <laughs> and she shut up for the rest of the night. That was fantastic. But, uh, as you can tell from that joke, I don't have any biological kids of my own. Uh, but if I ever did, I'd video the birth. Because then if my kids come up to me and they ask me where babies come from, I can show them. Some of you understand already. I would not become a premature grandfather. <laughs> but for good measure, I would name my firstborn daughter Chlamydia. <laughs> No, 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 hear me out, hear me out. It's the best sounding of the STDs. It sounds exotic. It sounds like it's from ancient Rome, you know? Chlamydia. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> and I can guarantee you that no guy's going to come in her until she's 40. So, so there's that. You know, but if, if I ever did have kids, I'd want to sit them down and, and tell them all this shit that's going to happen to the body by age 50. You know, maybe probably do this about age 20. And tell them stuff like, you know, you're going to lose hair where you want hair? And you're going to get hair in other places. Uh, you're, you're going to have to be on medication where a fatal event is one of the side effects. And this is mostly for guys. But when you're done peeing, or you think you're done peeing, you're not done peeing. But the exams get more evasive as you get older. And the thing is, I don't understand the etiquette. For example, the prostate exam. When you get the prostate exam, uh, do, do you tip after? <laughs> If you really like it, can you get it on like a bi-monthly basis? And if you can get it on a bi-monthly basis, does that mean that Kaiser's a full-service HMO? Uh, no, these are questions I think that need to be answered. I'm just saying. Um, but but it's, it's true. Uh, I, we were talking about this uh, a little bit earlier. I uh, have, I was, the first movie I was ever in was the uh, Steve Jobs movie. I was promptly cut out of it, but uh, we have another person that was in the same movie with me, so he can, I was actually there, we were there. I know you were. Yeah, it's fantastic. But, but here's the thing, 
Uh, and, and then we uh, ended up, uh, that led to a bunch of other things, uh, one of which is a Dell commercial where they told me shave off the beard and go with uh, Van Dyke, you know? And so I did, and they promptly shot the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Three days of shooting the back of my head. And so for the longest time, people would not recognize me walking down the street, you know, just like, yeah, okay. And then, uh, oh, that's who you are. The back of my head was famous. <laughs> They wouldn't recognize me until I passed by, and then they see this, and they're like, oh, that's who you are. Uh, anyway, uh, but, but that also led to me doing movies like, uh, uh, God, what are the movies I did? <laughs> I did uh, Comedy of the Corn, I did uh, you know, Halloween 7 Bloodline, I did uh, Colonized, uh, but, but the, what I haven't done is a porn, and all the signs are pointing there. If, for example, I was born in the year 69. 69 is the year of the cock. 69 is probably my favorite position. It all works out. The street you grow up on becomes your, your name in the porn business, and if that's the case, then my name would be Rockwood. I, I'm, I'm black Irish. You know the punchline. Black from the waist down. I'm a tripod is what I'm saying. Right? I'm just saying. You know. But, but the very first time I was ever on stage, uh, Ronald Reagan was president of the United States, and this, this tells you how long I've been doing stand-up. And in all that time, this is the first time I've actually done stand-up in a bookstore. So this is fantastic. You know, I've, in San Francisco, I have done it in a laundromat, but never in a <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, so, so here's the thing. Uh, the very first thing, because I love you guys, the very first thing I ever did on stage was Ronald Reagan as a pervert. Keep in mind, he was president of the United States at the time. Okay, this is the first thing I ever did. Oh, Nancy, oh, Nancy, I'm gonna smack that ass, come smack that ass. Come here, Nancy, I have the handcuffs and the DPD rub. That was the first thing I ever did on stage, and the reaction of the audience is exactly... <laughs> how it is right now. <laughs> but I'll tell you something else. Uh, now we have Barack Obama as President of the United States. And do you guys want to hear me do Barack Obama? No. Because yeah. I'm going to do it either way. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you guys know. <laughs> but, but here, so here, here's Barack Obama. Well, here's the thing. Michelle and I had anal sex last night. So forgive me if I don't sit down. <laughs> okay. And so, okay, okay. But, but here's the thing, his cadence is fantastic, his cadence is fantastic. I actually could do any song to his cadence as spoken word, and it would come out sounding fantastic, right? A good example of this is, well, here's the, <clears throat> here's the thing, I heard from a friend who heard it from a friend who heard it from another. <laughs> been messing around. <laughs> so, they say you have a boyfriend. You're with him uh, every weekend. Right? It, it works. Right? But uh, now that we're talking about presidents, we need to talk about the Trump in the room. I love that reaction. It's fantastic. <laughs> Donald Trump says he's going to build a wall so big you can see it from outer space. And if Canada, if, if we get uh, elected Donald Trump, what's going to happen is Canada's going to build a wall to keep us out, made ex out, out of empty maple syrup bottles. <laughs> With the openings on the Canadian side just to mock us. It's coming. Anyway, uh, but here's the other thing. The Canadians, I was reading this in Time Magazine, this is actually a real thing. They have the uh, maple syrup cartel. And they have a strategic reserve of maple syrup in Canada. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's true. Google this shit. It's true. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Thousands of gallons of maple syrup a couple years ago was missing out of the strategic reserve in Canada. No. Right? I repeat. Thousands of gallons of maple syrup was missing out of the strategic reserve, and so I was wondering, how, how does this happen? Right? 
So I was thinking, is this an Ocean's Eleven thing where they methodically plan this thing out? Is it uh, kind of like a, one of those Mission Impossible things with the dodging lasers and shit? And then I realized they're Canadians, they just left the door unlocked. <laughs> Oh, getting back to, to uh, before I get back to Trump, here's the thing. You steal maple syrup, how in the hell do you get rid of it, right? Because any of the stores are buying them from the maple syrup cartel, so where do you do it? Are you going to be under a bridge, you know, in a transit van going like, hey, buddy, I've got the good stuff. It's great, eh? Got a camper. It's organic. <laughs> right? I mean, how in the hell does that work out, right? I, I just don't get it. And anyway, I'm off on a tangent, so I'll get back to Donald Trump. Here's the thing about Donald Trump. In my opinion, he is the gonorrhea of the presidential election. <laughs> now, hear me out on this one. At first, you have a great time, right? And you think it's fun. You had a wonderful time. And, and then a little bit later... A little bit later, you go and you say, eh, I know something's wrong. I'm just not going to pay attention to it. It'll go away. Then it doesn't go away. And you're pissing razor blades. And that's the point that we're at right now. But if we take our medicine, which is Hillary, then we'll be cured by election time. <laughs> Hillary, the fact that I just called Hillary our medicine tells you everything you need to know about this presidential election. Right? <laughs> Hillary's uh, bumper sticker should, should read... Get over it, it's inevitable. <laughs> that should be your bumper sticker. But we started out with 20 candidates, or whatever it was, on the Republican side, and Donald Trump's the best we can do. I remember at first we had, uh, uh, well, we had Ben Carson running, right? Yeah. And Ben Carson would be the first not collected president that we've ever elected. <laughs> Fantastic. And he, he would be going like, you're listening to the soothing sounds of Ben Carson on WZZZ. Sponsored by Lunesta. It would be interesting. Yeah, but we had a Bush running for president. We had a Clinton running for president. We had a Jurassic movie in the theaters last year. We had a... What was that other movie? Uh, we, we had an uh, Independence Day movie. Which makes it official for a while there. I think we ran out of ideas. You know, yeah. since the 1990s. I think it was the last time we had any ideas. But I thought that Jeb Bush would do better. It was Jeb exclamation mark. And, and then it quickly became Jeb question mark Jeb that's pretty much how the presidential election uh, went you know uh, but, but I am convinced by the way go on because I, I was just thinking about you I gotta say I think that, that um, Steve Jobs is a space alien I, I'm off topic I know forgive me I think Steve Jobs is a space alien here's why First, he gives us technology we didn't even know existed, yeah. right? He's building this, well, Apple is building this uh, big spaceship, mothership, uh, over in Cupertino. I don't know if you guys have, Google it, because it looks like a spaceship. But most importantly, exhibit, the best exhibit of this whole thing, and I'm sticking by this, is that if you go over and, and you watch the original movie Independence Day, okay, the original movie Independence Day, it um, has where, it, it, spoilers, by the way, it's been like 20 years. <laughs> so you have the computer, and he uploads a virus to the mothership. And that laptop happens to be an Apple, which means that the mothership had to be Apple OS compatible. awesome, by the way. I gotta say, you guys are awesome. And I gotta tell you this, I want to bring you all home with me, but I live in a small uh, shoebox, so I can't do that. But I did get a timeshare, and you're all invited. So come see me after the show, I'll give you the information. I got good news and bad news. Good news is, I got a really good deal. It's in Syria. Bad news is, it's in ISIS-controlled territory. But the good news is, it was always bombed once, so it has most of its walls. And it's a hot climate, so missing that one wall doesn't mind. You know, it's not a big deal because you got this cross wind going through. It's fantastic. And, and here's the thing: there's a crater there, but when it rains, it becomes a swimming pool. 
Fantastic. <laughs> ISIS stands for Islamic State in Syria. It also is a name of a badass Egyptian goddess. So yeah. for a group that's so anti-woman, yeah. isn't it ironic that they're named after one? Yeah. <laughs> I will leave you guys with this thought for the day. The best protection against identity theft is bad credit. <laughs> Johnny Corner. Have a great tomorrow. Thank you. Keep it up for Johnny.